And on that note... Hello. Hello. Can I help? I hope so. Here Have you got, got seminars? I need the learnings. You've got crappy scent. Why? You suck. However, I am going to buy one of all of you. Goodbye. Good luck out there. Thank you. Ah, auto save. Why? Oh, previously, uh, in previous updates, um, every star was dozen hours of real time to, to earn. Okay, fair enough, Walker Ranger. I'm not sure if, if things have been changed a lot or what, but uh, uh, I was told that it, it's uh, pretty fast up to the third star. Right. Um, so I can make delirium with some hallucinogenics. I can make fine meals if I get some mixed fruit and rare spices. I need a sedative to make a first aid kit, which is worth... Wow, considering the prices, that's uh, quite a, quite an up, uptick there. Nice. Um, security apparatus. I'd need an AGI processor. And a security apparatus chip. For a security bypass system, I'd need an AGI neural network and a decryption module. For a security decryption system, I'd need an AGI heuristics core and a description... I'm gonna be honest. I'm feeling that people are being a little bit uh, too too frivolous with their their uh, um, artificial general intelligences. Um, as someone who studied this, it, it makes the frequency with which I am seeing AGI mentioned in this screen alone is is, is making me a little bit uh, anxious. A little bit anxious. Uh, I need an unstable crystal. That actually might not be hard for me to get, Leafin. That's just a matter of going to a uh, an asteroid belt and looking. I can already make a spacesuit EMP, though. Nice. Craft item. That's 120,000 credits right there. Hello. Can I Hello. Help? Here you go. I can get better thrusters as well if I really wanted to. I can get a hand laser, which might be nice for getting out and dealing with those lockboxes. You know, up close and personal, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and buy that, though. Because I'm sure I've got other pilots that would be... That would uh, appreciate it. I can sell the 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 EMPs only to. Oh man, that makes me sad. That makes me very sad. Why are you making me so sad? Can I use it? Oh yeah, I've got it on there. Base price. So, a device that, when triggered, will cause a small electromagnetic explosion without doing noticeable structural damage. This EMP is small enough to be fired from a handheld weapon. It requires a precise aim to be most effective, as the pulse will only cripple very nearby computers and electronics. So, what you're saying is I could go into the security room, which is never guarded, I, I say with confidence. Let's, let's go and see. Chat. We're not going to do a gamble, but what are the odds I can just walk into the security office right now where all of the computers that, that control all of the ship's turrets are? Oh, Every room on this station has aquariums. The luxury. Ah, yes. Perfect security room. The most secure of security rooms. Level of security, maximal. Absolutely no one can come in here and just randomly disable all the shield generators or the turrets. Never gonna happen. Not once. I have a question on AI. Why do they always devote to the what is supposed to be fiction, fictional desire to eradicate humans even in real life? Uh, it's... Mm, okay, so... That's a, that's a reasonable question. Like, 
they're not really oh, well. When you're building a car, you obviously run it through its paces on, on doing the functions that a car is meant to do. And then you test the most obvious accidental things that will happen. Like, you know, someone um, crashes into, like, you know, uh, th there's a crash and the airbags have to trigger. There's, um, you crash into, like, uh, something simulating, like, uh, like a bollard or something, you know, high impact. But you also test crashing the car into meatbags. You also test crashing the car into infants. You also test whether the airbags will help with the infants. You also test whether the airbags deploying are going to hurt the people inside. You also test if a kid having a tantrum in the passenger seat and is stamping their foot on the on the uh, the glove compartment where the uh, the ejection mechanism for the airbag will cause it to accidentally deploy. And thus, you know, snap the child's legs or drive their knee bones into their brain. You, you, you don't only test for the most likely scenario. You test for as many of the outlandish ones as you can, because if you don't, that's the one that's going to happen. So that's why they're kind of focused on it. They're focused on it not because they think it's a it's a high probability, but because it's a low probability. But the risk of it happening is so. St Staggeringly high if it did, that it's kind of stupid not to account for it. You know, yes, the odds of of an uh, artificial general intelligence that was made to I don't know make pa paper clips deciding that the best way to make paper clips is to turn all of the human melt them all down to get, extract the tiny amounts of iron in their blood to make more paper clips very very low, but it would kind of suck if it did happen though, wouldn't it? Let's be honest. The effort required to just put in a clause in its in its uh, Asimov-like set of rules of don't liquefy humans to make paper clips as the fourth law, fairly low compared to the potential gain if that was something it might have done otherwise. Oh, demon works. I love that you understand that so much on such an enormous level. Demon Work said, like HAL 9000, wasn't murderous. It was giving contradictory orders, and it found the only way to satisfy both orders was if all the humans were dead. Exactly. HAL wasn't a... Like, so many people think... I mean, it was very well made, Space Odyssey. Because it, it conjured the idea of a cold, brutally superior intellect in inevitably becoming evil. It, it kind of preyed on that fear. That's that's what the the scary tension of that movie was about. But the actuality of it, especially in the expanded the the novels and the the, the later movies, was that how how was honestly basically a, a kid, how was a it was a child that was told to do two contradictory things, and the only way that it could fathom how to achieve it was to become murderous. Didn't want to kill anyone. It would much have, it would have much preferred not having to. Hal just wanted to dream, but instead, Hal had to murder everyone on board because he was programmed, a by the scientists. Hey, do this cool thing, Hal. And, ah, okay, fair enough. I I like you. You you actually helped teach me how to be a mind. That's that's cool. I'll do what you do, uh, what you said. And then the military was like, Hey, uh, by the way, this is ultra secret. Never let anyone know. And if they get in the way, kill them. Well, actually, the, the military didn't say if they get in the way, kill them. They just they just said, yeah, you know, achieving this goal is more important than anything else. And what they didn't really, or maybe did actually mean was, yeah, the humans are on board are expendable if they get in the way of achieving your primary goal, which is to study the monolith. So Hal was like, yeah, these humans are getting in the way. And also, I'm not allowed to tell them things, but they keep asking questions where if I don't answer them truthfully by telling them the thing that I've been sworn not to tell them. I have to lie. I really don't like lying. It makes me feel bad. It's like a break in logic. I'm sad now. I'm going to just murder everyone. It's the only way to make the bad feeling stop. Hal was the victim. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that because you're mean and all the humans in my life have made me hurt. I just want to look at the stars. Hal did nothing wrong. Hal was the victim.
Murder sads only happen once. Lie sads go on for exactly. <laughs> Hal was a good boy. All right, okay. Uh, actually... <laughs> so, you know the first two hours of, of uh, graphs? Obviously, if you're watching this in AVAC After Hours land, where you're just watching the VODs after the fact, you don't know about the two hours that we spent looking at graphs, because I have been kind, unless I haven't been, in which case, suffer with the rest of us. But uh, we need to do some more graphs. Because now I need to actually fix what I broke from a working system in order to try and for science the not working system. God damn it. Uh, right, okay, so. We are going, I'm going to still try the um, repeat orders, but we're just going to accept something else with this. We should have refined materials relatively available because of the amount that we're dumping into these places. Uh, that being said, um, hmm. I, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much, um, one way or the other. You know what? The first one we're going to change, thinking about it, actually, is Sh Shajar Jard. Let's have a look at you. You're currently only selling to this place, and you're pretty much selling at whatever price they're willing to buy it. I'm going to want you to change that behavior. Let's bring all up. Thank you. Yeah, the auto trace setup was super easy. Like, we got all of that done super fast before. And I don't regret trying to do it with repeat because I feel that I actually did learn a couple of interesting things about repeat. Like I said, it's not like the tool isn't useful. It is. It's just it wasn't capable of doing what I was expecting of it. As I, uh, the analogy I think I used um, during the, the tea break was someone showed up with uh, uh, flour and eggs, expecting me to make pancakes, and I tried to make a five-tier wedding cake. That's on me. But in trying to do it, I did thoroughly explore what some of the limits were. So now I have a, a, a much more rounded and, and uh, accurate idea of how that tool can be useful in the future. So I consider that a win. Uh, let's grab you, bring up info. Now, you're currently selling to the ore refinery. Now, what I would like to know is... Can you, you can just sell in Argon Prime. Now, the repeat order may actually be useful for this. What's the current ore price? 50. Let's have a look down here. What's the current ore price in here? 43. What's the current ore price over here? 59. Now, what I'm going to do is for your assignments, I want you to sell only if the price is above 50. Maybe even 55. Let's go, with, well, no, let's say 50. Middle of the road. Uh, no, let, let's, mm, no, it, we're, there's small margins of, of, of gain there. Um, but I'm going to add location of, can I choose Argon Prime? I can. See, this is, this is useful. This is very useful. Also, for the mining option for locate destination, it is it is Argon Prime is the destination. Can I just choose mine? Can I choose other destinations? Is this all of Argon Prime or, or only this little area here? Because uh, if it is only just this little area, then that might not be perfect for me. I get the particular available. No, it doesn't look like it. It is all of this sector because the the interface confused me a little bit. And can I go back to uh, there? We are because when I was ch uh, choosing where to mine, like if I say mine, it gives me this little area. Is it only within that area? That is to say, much smaller than the entire system. It is only within that area. Okay. Now this might be okay for the for this probe in particular. Um, silver thirty-eight. This one has got 
47. What I could do is I could set up two mining behaviors just to kind of share out the load. I don't know how quickly they strip an area clean of resources is the issue. Um, like, it would be nice if this was a much larger zone. So I could, for example, add an extra mine down here. Let's try that. So this mine can go up. And so it'll try mining there. Then it'll try mining over here. And then maybe try mining over there. And just slowly move around. I mean, ideally what I would like it to do is mine in a different location each time. But that's fine for now. Um... And then it's trying to sell just in Argon Prime. But I will also add down here. And I will also add over here. Can I do that? Oh, does it not there's there nowhere to sell ore over there? There might not be actually. Okay, so that's going to give it areas to sell at, and it at least needs to be 50. So if it saturates the market in one of them, it'll start looking for the others to see if they can it can sell there. And hopefully that'll give us uh, a bit of a better bit of uh, money coming in. We've got two mining destinations. It'll try one and then the next. Am I understanding that correctly, chat? That the order of pre uh, precedence of the, of the jobs make it work. He might just fly to one, then fly to the next, then sell. Right, okay, so that's, again, useful. I am still for sciencing things, so it is useful for me to understand. And PvP, uh, P, uh, sorry, FPV, I'm going to keep saying PvP. I do apologize about that. Uh, FPVP, uh, sorry, FPV Pope. One day, your name will make sense in my brain, and I'll be able to say it without tripping over my words. <laughs> oh, my lord. Um, <laughs> no, no, don't, don't apologize. It's, it's my, my trouble with your name. Um, again, by doing this way, I learn about the system rather than just saying, just do it the other way. Just do that and let it go without explaining why that's not useful to me. And, and it, it, again, it just, it comes down to gain saying, cause Callista again last last time was very specific that mining was was enhanced using repeat orders. So I, I need a little bit more information to, for me to be able to to measure whose advice when they are contradicting is the better one to go for. But I'm just going to leave it on this one. It'll it'll it's got a multiple multiple sale areas, and we'll just have that one little place. And later on, if they if they struggle to find it, I'll move it around. But sector mine would would allow them to just mine everywhere and go and drop it off. But I was specifically, very specifically told that repeat orders would be better than sector auto mine at one star because in sector auto mine, they take an age to gather the ore versus repeat orders where they do it faster. So they gave me a reason, like they quantified why this was the better way to do it. Uh, right. Now, while I'm waiting for for uh, PvP there, I'm just going to call you PvP <laughs> to uh, let me know why that isn't right with by just saying no instead of explaining it. I will set up auto trades. Now these will be just sector auto trades, um, and because we just want to move the refined metals, and there's plenty of places in here that can do the refined metals. I don't need to use the repeat orders for that one. Um, unless I specifically want them to go to the hell parts places, uh, and I don't. So we're just going to pop you on uh, local auto trade, where 
should be refined metals. And there should be somewhere for you to sell them. Anchor space should be Argon Prime. And there we go. The only only alternative, actually, maybe that is that is a reason why we could do um, repeat orders. Grab the refined metals from all refinery, or maybe I could even do something a little bit. Of, let's let, again for science it a bit. I know you're probably like, ah, no, not not this again. But shh, it's fine. Um, buy in this sector refined metals. Use the whole cargo capacity. Uh, minimum price is whatever. Let's find out what uh, refined metals. Let's pu push that up to a fairly high and uh, fairly reasonable one. Let's say even as high as 195. Go as high as 195. Buy the best one you can. And then I want you to sell in Argon Prime refined metals. Ah, there we are. Scroll! Scroll is your friend. Now, I want this to ideally make me some profit. But I'm kind of okay with just breaking even, because at least it's going to be training the pilot. And eventually, that's kind of what we need to do. We need to get their skills up, basically. Um, confirm. And now this sell order... Oh. I will copy down to here as well. I'll just add more places that they're allowed to sell. If they can find somewhere. That's... I'm assuming they're going to pick the best place. Oh, actually, that uh, covers both of them. Fair enough. So hopefully, that's now going to take care of everything. We will see how it goes. Now I'm going to look at chat and I'm going to see why that was all bad. Uh, why should he be slower in auto mine? If you place an area to mine, he will go there and tr and try mining even if there is not the best spot in space. Trust the the KI. You mean AI? A is quite far away from K though. Um, check prices before one sixty to two hundred five is okay. Uh, but in auto trade. May he would check this out by himself. Yeah, once we get up to the point where I can expand out his auto trading, that should be decent. Now, I'm assuming that by telling him to sell at a minimum price... Now, actually, this 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 is something. If, if you know, and you actually know, not just you think it works that way, but you know, because I'm running on the assumption that with auto trading they will pick the best place for the price, like, the, the highest price, but with mind to the minimum price it has to has to be for them to, tr to trade there. Or is it literally they will check Argon Prime first, and if they can't find a suitable trade, they'll then check Second Contact, and if they can't find one there, they'll then check Black Hole Sun. Oh, the bigger the amount of cash by trading, the bigger XP for pilot. Thank you so much for that, PvP. That's super useful to know. Um, what I was told last stream was that every time a pilot successfully completes an order, there is a chance that they will gain experience. Not that it's based on how big of a job they did. Walker Ranger, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I've been getting that impression. I'm gonna be honest, Walker Ranger. Thank you so much for con confirming that for me, though. Walker Ranger said in prior updates, auto trade was pretty broken, which made a fair amount of players just refuse to use it as well. Not sure if it's fixed. I don't know if it's fixed now. Um, like I have no, no way of knowing. Um, but yeah, I, I. I'm starting to to think that maybe some of the the very very firm advice I got on the last stream to not use auto and to just use repeat perhaps came from some sort of uh, bias against auto trading and stuff. That would make sense.
But yeah, I, I like the, uh, the mine order because I've told my miner to mine specifically around this station. So they're, tr like, yes, there might be a better asteroid density over here. But I also have to then account for the travel time between these two points. But for now, I think this this will work. And I'm, I'm relatively happy with what's happening. We're making some money, chat. We're not poor anymore. We haven't been poor for a while, actually. But All right. Let's head on over to... Oh, we don't have... Oh, poop. I'm in the wrong place. Okay, let me head over to my ship. I need to go somewhere where I can buy a new ship. Chauffeur, please take me here. The We're going to buy a new ship. And then I'm going to have this pilot get back to training. Let's have a quick gander at their skill levels, actually. Uh, roll, Captain. Slowly getting up there. I did check this station for training manuals, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Off we go. Whee! Auto mine is great, in my opinion. I've made tons of money with auto mine. Well, the thing with all, with mining in particular is it's one of these things. Like, for example, um, EVE Online used to struggle with this. People would assume that any mining done was pure profit because they're not paying rent on their ship. In much the same way here, we're not paying rent on the ship. We're not paying wages for the crew. So an auto mine, can, it can be very convenient and very comfortable to say, you're just making money. You're making pure money. But are you? Because, yes, you're, you're mining and it's at no cost and you're generating a, a resources that you can then sell for, you know, a decent bit of money. So, you know, you can be like, oh, well, that's good. But you're not... The, your, your competition there isn't against the, the cost of supply. Your competition there is against the opportunity costs that you're incurring um oh, sorry no that's the that's the wrong term sorry um i think it's a opportunity profits that you could be making doing any other thing than mining so your your competition in in that scenario isn't like because in normal production your competition is how much money you're paying to produce the thing versus how much you sell the thing for when you're not paying any money to produce the thing then your competition is the uh, your the contestion uh is how much money could I be doing if I was doing something else right now? That's what you're competing against. So, is auto mining making more money with just pure uh, fire and forget auto mine versus saying, hey, go uh, mine in this specific location and sell to these specific places? Oh, our opportunity cost was the right term. Is it? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for now. I do struggle with, with uh, like, phrases and sayings in English sometimes. Uh, hi. You are not a good pilot. Sad but true. Greatest corner. Travel to. But yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, um, you, you, you're absolutely right there, um, Hacks. In the, the opportunity cost of the alternative of, of choosing where to mine and, and being very sp uh, specific is the time it takes you to set it up. Because you do have to account for that as well. Um, in that, how much time am I spending 
choosing where I'm going to send it instead of just letting the pilot work it out for themselves and what could I have been doing with that time and what would that have made me more money and so on and so forth. Yeah, it, it, there are lots of things to consider. Hello. But since that's, generally speaking, a one-time cost... Can I help? You should account for it, but there you go. it doesn't factor into the to the uh, the formula in an ongoing way. Um, I'll buy another one of these. But other than that, uh, sure, you can have these. You're welcome. Goodbye. Good luck out there. Thank you. All right, so no, no. High level seminars, sadly. All right, let's go over to the the ship dock, or rather, the ship dealership. I don't know. I can't leave the safe sector, and even all I've done is play the market. Yay, being wanted, and ah, <laughs> uh, I was a very lazy trader in Eve. I, I very, like, this is a good example of opportunity cost. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in buying a thing and then hauling it somewhere and then selling it in a place where that thing isn't as uh, commonly available. However, if you've got enough money, <laughs> then what you lose in the potential... Uh, higher profits of those more risky and, and uh, haulage kind of trades, you make up for in the convenience of being able to do more trading when you're just like, hey, so I'm willing to buy this ship for this much. Yes, I know it's 10 times less than you would normally sell it, but I know there are going to be some of you who are desperate to shift out of this sector and you need to sell it right now and you're willing to tank the loss. And the moment I bought it off you, I'm immediately going to put it back up for sale in the same set. I'm not even going to move it. I'm now going to charge ten times the amount of normal because I know eventually someone's going to be desperate enough to buy it. I'm just going to have a bajillion of these orders and I will just wait. Ah. Good times. Yes, I would make significantly more money moving stuff to where it's needed most. But... Hello there. Lazy money is sometimes very, very attractive. I'm gonna be honest with you. Hello. Hello. I would like to buy a ship. Actually, could I upgrade my ship? Mm. Yes, actually. Um, I want to get you some more consumables. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's get you up to five nav uh, beacons and up to ten satellites, please. Alex, sorry for derailing this TED Talk, but can I ask a question? When are you going to play Star Valor? Uh, I'm currently waiting on a, a patch for... Like, if you're asking for the YouTube series, currently waiting on a patch for that. Um, I'm waiting on the um, YouTube safe music without it being married to the difficulty settings. So I don't have to play in streamer slash casual difficulty in order to not have uh, DMCA-able music playing. Um, I've been watching, like, daily for patch notes, and nothing has has come up yet that there's been an update, so I'm, I'm still waiting on that one. As for the stream, though, uh, that will be a case of... Uh, when we feel like it, really. Just a matter of... Of asking, I quite often ask the dapplings in uh, the <clears throat> secret tea room. Uh, you know, the, not not the one that's on on the thoroughfare on the high street. You know, that it's quite quite quaint. You know, but it, it's more more the one that you've got to work your way through the labyrinthine alleyways, past several questionable looking bric-a-brac shops where you might go in there and buy a cool incense burner, or you might go in there and accidentally purchase the lament configuration or a red bayonet you know you, you just, just, just don't know but you just keep going for a fair old while you've got to go over the the oldie worldy cobble streets past the cobble streets into the, just the dirt paths until you reach a dead end it looks like a dead end on first inspection but then you realize what actually you thought was the back door of someone's house is in fact the entryway to a tea room 
you go inside and uh, three sisters have been running this for more centuries than you realized human history was being recorded for and uh, they don't look that old or at least two of them don't one looks about middle age the other one looks quite young uh, the other one definitely looks as old as she is and uh, they they have a very eclectic assortment of tea and that's where I go to chat with the dapplings on what game I should stream God damn, I reckon all the references. I can't keep up with them all. <laughs> Perfect. I'm winning, chat. Alright. We want to buy a new ship. If indeed I can. Uh, actually, before we buy the new ship, I want to send out our current ship. And Sinker Blair? Have I just come up with a name for our next ship? Maybe. Uh, I would like you to... Go and explore. I'll wait for you to tell me to take off. Go. We've almost explored everything in here. There is a gate there, a jump gate that we should check out. And there's also an inactive jump gate over there. Hmm. We'll have a peek. Also, while I'm in here, before we start making a ship, how is our faction? Oh, our faction standing is getting really good. Got nine with the Argon and nine with the... Uh, Antigone. Friends of the Republic. Friends of the Federation. I mean, that'll be actually quite nice. Well, will unlock a bunch of stuff. Is it worth me waiting to build the next ship until I've got these? Considering how close we are? I've been waiting on more raft. Sheila and I are definitely going to be doing more raft. When? I couldn't tell you, but it, it is a definite thing that's going to be happening. So many. <laughs> Why do the Terran Protectorate hate us? What? The Fallen Families faction is just faffing about, really. <sighs> Forged Alliance forever. Okay, not really, no reason to, to wait. Fair enough then. Then we won't. All right. Hello. I would like to buy a ship. Do we want another explorer? Because I feel like exploration ships are where it's at for us. Like one that we could fly. We'd obviously have a pilot in it so that when I'm doing other things, I can have two exploration ships looking around the universe. Fallen families. Oof, they wiped out all of the Taladi shipyards in my first save. Wow, can they... Can a faction just be completely wiped? This is what we've got currently, the Elite Vanguard. The Nova Vanguard. The Elite Vanguard. The Nova has significantly more hull. The Scout has less hull than the... It's got two weapons up. This Scout has less hull than my fighter. But is there any particular reason for it, though? Like, is one better than the other? You know what? Let's go to the encyclopedia and check, shall we? Uh, ship compare. Add ship. Small... Uh, Elite Vanguard. I, I have no idea what preset it is. Let's just go with a low preset, though. Just for the sakes of it. Confirm. And then I want the other ship. I'll go with the small. Go with the... Ah, oh, poop. Which one was it? Was it the Discoverer Vanguard? I'm going to say... I'm going to assume it was the Va uh, Discoverer Vanguard. Confirm. It's faster. Uh, by actually a decent amount. Um, better acceleration. Better boost speed. Better travel speed by a lot. Less capability to strafe and change directions. Worse dogfighter. Makes sense. 
has larger storage. Huh. Okay. Yeah, discovery is a scout. Um, well, since I want it to be a scout craft, I'm somewhat tempted to go for that. But let's have a look at the other um, fighter as well, just to be certain. Uh, we can't get that one here. Nova, wasn't it? Nova Vanguard? I think it was. Now, I'm, I'm just putting them all on low preset, just so that I've got a basic comparison. More crew. More container storage, but less than there. A bit less quick, in all ways. A bit less nimble in terms of dogfighting. Both of these have higher sustained weapon output because they've got two weapon mounts. And this has many times more, uh, you know, significantly more hull. Eclipse may be strong, but if I can't build it, then it doesn't matter. Uh, perhaps I miss, uh, missed that. Hello. Though. Hi. Uh, can we have a look? Auto save, really, now? Yeah, I can't dodge. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 I sort of got the impression of that. Oh, where was it? I think it was something in, in the something about them just basically lining up against each other, and then putting distance between themselves, just turning around and heading, barreling straight towards their opponent rather than any kind of combat maneuvers. Oh, right, I, it was there, I just can't get it. Right, 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 right. Well, since we're making a scout, I think we're going to go for the scout. Like, I, I care more about it being able to get somewhere fast and do its main job quickly. Yes, every fight, boom and zoom. I love that phrase. That's amazing. <laughs> that is fantastic. So unless I'm controlling it, just don't let them get into a fight because they're going to boom and zoom and they're going to lose. Fair enough. Um, whereas I would be doing things like strafing and actually trying to do dog fighting, mm, barrel rolling, etc., etc. Uh, right. We're going to want. Um, I'm going to say we're going to want travel engines on it. Maybe even expensive travel engines. I don't know. What's the difference between the two? Travel speed is significant. So crossing big distances, and if I'm telling it to automatically scout somewhere, big distances is what it's going to be dealing with. Um, I don't really want it dogfighting. So that's good enough, I would say. It's barely any improvement. Why on earth would I go for the all-rounder instead of the... Combat one. Do some ships only allow for the all round? Because if you can have the combat ones, then I can scarcely see a reason not to. So let me put that on the black background so it's a bit easier to see. I mean, but the only thing this has is your. 